Right, welcome back to another video uh, showing you how to use MobiRise for your small business or for your small organization. And I get this question a lot, and the question is about images. Is there an ideal image size for these different content blocks in MobiRise? Uh, I've heard many people have some different technical issues with their images. Uh, some are being cut off, some are just blurry. Um, those are the common ones that I hear from others. I actually have not had much of an issue with it, uh, but I am a photographer and I tend to work with larger images anyway. So um, I have not experienced some of the things, but maybe I can show you a couple of different tricks. And what, what this video is, is just gonna be uh, kind of an experiment uh, to see what it looks like at different image sizes uh, in MobiRise. So we have our website here, <clears throat> and I'm just going to drag a block in. I'm going to use the same block all throughout. So to change our background image, we just click on, you can click up here. Uh, normally you can click on the background, there we go. And we'll click on our image, and I prepared um, four different image sizes here. So the first image size is really large. It's 11,000 pixels by 5,500 pixels. This is an enormously large image um, that realistically you should never have to use on your website and you should never use on your website. This would be for like print, print design work. Uh, but we're going to use it just as a test to show you what it looks like. Okay, so let's click on that. It will insert our image into the background. Okay. Now we have our 11,000 by 5,000 pixel image, <clears throat> which is very large. Um, it looks nice. Uh, the, I can see everything. It's very clear and crisp. That's what I would expect. Okay, let's do, uh, sorry. Let's just move this guy up. so that we can see them together. Okay, and we want to go to our next image size. Our next image size is 3,000 pixels, so that's quite a bit smaller uh, than 11,000 pixels, but 3,000 is still a pretty good sized image. This is actually in the area where I would normally do images. So normally I, I try to keep mine around 2,500 pixels wide. And so let's use that. And we'll put that in there like this. Let's try to get this where we can see the whole image. You can see that there's nothing, nothing's being cut off. Uh, the full image is there. Do the same thing, full image is there. And so far, so good. Uh, we could save ourselves a lot of headache, and you could save your user especially a lot of headache by using the 3000 pixel image excuse me, over the 11,000 pixel image. And uh, I'll show you when I do the next one, the size difference between the two. Let's add yet another block. You can see here, I was telling you about the size. You can see the size of this one is 77, almost 78 megabytes. The size of this 3,000 pixel one is only three megabytes. So that's a savings of 70, 75 uh, megabytes, which is huge. Every, every, <clears throat> every byte has to be downloaded from one place to another whenever your user visits your website. So whatever you're using, if you, the smaller the image you can get at the best, you know, that it looks the best, you should do that. Uh, it's called image optimization and it's creating optimized image for not only the user but also the application where they're going to be using it if you have 90 percent of your traffic on mobile you've got to got to get those images small because um, mobile devices are not nearly as strong as a desktop or a laptop computer uh, even though they seem like it they're not their computing power is not and so and people are often on 3g networks which are quite a bit smaller um, <clears throat> they're less bandwidth than your normal like Wi-Fi or Ethernet um, home-based type of internet connection so 
if 90% of your traffic is coming from desktop clients, you know, maybe you can do some more high resolution imaging, but for most people that's not the case. So you really have to consider the size of your images. This is a big deal. Uh, the next one we're going to put in is this 1500 pixel one. So now we've gone through from 3.3 megabytes down to 807 kilobytes. So a kilobyte is before it's a thousand kilobytes is one megabyte. So we've trimmed that again by 500% uh, or so. So just going from 3000 to 1500 pixels. So let's see what it looks like. <clears throat> to my eye, um, for me, I feel like I, I'm just trying to look and see if there's any loss of crisp. It doesn't really look like it. I want to see it in the clouds, but I'm really not seeing it in the clouds, and I'm not seeing any lack of clarity through the mountains either. So I'm looking here, and the difference between 11,000 pixels and 3,000 pixels and 1,500 pixels is not enough for me to see. So um, I'm accustomed to looking and finding flaws and defects in photographs, and, and I'm just not seeing any and maybe others um, might be able to see them. There might be some, I feel like I see some degradation in the sky just a little bit because it's one solid color, which is gonna happen too uh, for as your image gets smaller. <clears throat> Let's try the last image and you'll really be able to see it, so. Our last image is 640 pixels, and you can see right here, you're starting to really get some degradation. There's some little artifacts over the peaks on both sides. This would be a, a not a good image to use. 640 pixels is not wide enough, because what's happened is 640 pixels is like this wide. And what it's doing is Mobirize is built so that this image covers the space. So it stretches whatever image, if it's too small, it stretches it to fit into all the corners and cover from side to side. So if your image is too small, it's going to stretch it out. If your image is too big, then it's going to shrink it down. And shrinking down images does not make them lose any quality. It's only when you stretch them out. So that's why people say use as large an image as you can use, um, because shrinking is okay. So if you shrink you know, you shrink an image down to a small thumbnail, it's not going to lose any quality. If you try to blow it up, it'll lose a lot of quality, which is what we're seeing here. You can see the difference in the sharpness and the crispness of the mountains. Okay, so you're seeing it's real blurry. It's not crisp and clear. And this happens because your image is too small. Um, and let's try one more thing. <clears throat> and that is, what if you're using... Uh, so far, we've only used what are called landscape size images, which is they're wider than they are tall. But what about if you use a portrait orientation image, which is taller than it is wide? Um, let's use this one here. So in Mobirize, unless you go into the code editor, you don't have any way to tell the, um, tell the browser what part of the image to look at. So right now, we're looking at this middle horizontal line, and whatever fits in this space right here, that's all that we're seeing in our image. For a lot of images, that's okay. But if you wanted to show the top of the image, or you wanted to show the bottom of the image, instead of uh, the middle, you would have to go into the code editor and make some changes to the CSS, or you would have to go into an image editor and just crop the part that you want and make it into a horizontal image. Um, for most people this is going to be okay. So you can see it still leaves some room for when you do parallax uh, scrolling. So in the parallax it's going to show up just fine. Uh, I mean in the uh, mobile side it's going to show up just fine. But 
because that orientation, that view, is not wide, it's tall. Um, but on a desktop, so if you're really building for desktop, which I don't know that you should, um, then it's not going to show up quite as well. You're not going to be able to see the top and the bottom. So maybe this is what's happening with people, that they're, uh, the tops of the images are being cut off uh, because they are doing uh, portrait sized, which is tall and not wide. And the wide size is called landscape orientation. So a couple of tricks. You can see now that this is, um, this is parallax. The parallax is on. <clears throat> so this is all moving over the top of the background, right? Under the block parameters, you can actually turn that off. And when you do that, it changes the image. So now we're only seeing the top of the image, but because this size, this window size is really, or this block size is probably only about 600 pixels tall or 650, you're only going to see the, the top 650 pixels. So um, it does change the image size whenever you turn that off. So let's turn it off at one of these. You can see the image shift a little bit, right? You see how it shifts? Um, that's actually going to give you a little bit more space at the top and maybe at the bottom too. So if you're just, you want just a little bit more space um, and you don't care about this parallax movement, then just turning that off will give you just a, a little bit more space, maybe 5% more space on your image. Um, but if you have a, a portrait size image, just know that when you turn this off, it's going to default to the top. So the top and the left is going to be put here. And whenever you have a parallax image, it's going to display the center of the image because there needs to be enough room for them when it moves to be able to show more of the picture behind it. Does that make sense? So it has to show more, this this has to be bigger than the area because the area is moving, right? The, the window, the block is moving. So it has to be a little bit bigger. <clears throat> so that's the way that we deal with parallax in web design. Um, so you can make those choices. If you have any more technical questions, you could also reach out to the MobiRise support um, team and their email is support at mobirise.com. Uh, you can also reach out to me with any questions that you have. Just know that if it's more technical in nature or has to do with the, the build of the software, I'm not with MobiRise. I did not build the software. I'm just teaching people how to use it. Um, you can uh, email me. My email is brian, B-R-I-A-N, at highwaywebconsulting.com. And you could also send me a tweet at Brian Haferkamp, H-A-F-E-R-K-A-M, P. And uh, you can also go to uh, my website, which is highwaywebconsulting.com, and send me an email through the contact form. Many people have, have taken that route as well. Um, thank you for everybody for subscribing. I hope that your pictures go well. If you have any issues, um, just raise them either with me or with MobiRise, and uh, we'll try to see if we can get some more specific help. So if you have a question or um, a comment just leave that obviously in the comments at the bottom of the video and thank you for watching thank you for subscribing if you have suggestions for more videos more tutorials for MobiRise um, or even how to uh, do some more advanced coding type of issues uh, in MobiRise just leave a comment uh, either on my channel or on this video or you can, again you can send an email or a tweet and I'll respond to those so many of these videos are actually coming uh, from <clears throat> from other users and builders who have uh, begun to use MobiRise but are running into tricky situations or things they don't quite know how to do. Uh, so if you send that to me, uh, we'll get it all set up. And I uh, appreciate you watching, and I will see you in the next video.